I don't think they're developing a game which, one, couldn't beat Australia and didn't get the job done against the All Blacks. If they're predictable, it makes it easy for us to prepare. We just didn't quite get it right on the weekend. Look, they put us under incredible pressure and we were average at times. Line-out didn't function. High ball was so competitive. And like Geordie said afterwards, Faf was putting up kicks that were spiralling and then spinning and all that sort of stuff. Let's not get this wrong. When they play like that, it's really hard to play against. But mine is a philosophical answer. It bores me to tears. I don't like it, right? However, how do you play against it? And, like, for me, I thought they were going to give um, the physio a test <laughs> cap. She was on that much. You know, blood bin. Get the blood off. Get people on. I mean, are they, are they actually... Is that within, is that within the, the sort of values of our game, right? They do it really well. But for me, I think South Africa has more to offer. When, when um, Corlese says after the game, that's our DNA, I actually, although he's the captain, I don't really want to disagree with him because he's a way better player than I ever was and a great man. However, I don't think that is their DNA. They have outstanding outside backs. They've had like, some of the best outside backs in the last decade. And I agree with you, JK, it's not the most attractive, but I can't go past the fact that this rattled the All Blacks. We just saw highlights of the stoppages in play. It was so frustrating to watch, but it killed our momentum. Vermeule, uh, number eight, Vermeulen, he probably had a half an hour hooey with the ref. Every single scrum penalty, they purposely were slowing us down and stopping us. Was it attractive? No. Do I like it? No. Did it rattle us? 100%. Is it just a challenge then, Ruby, that we embrace twice a year? We just go to ourselves, you know what? This is what to expect. Helps us prepare for the next time we are going to play them on a big occasion, which is every year in the Rugby Championship, or we happen to face them in the Rugby World Cup. That's what we expect. Is that uh, what we should just reduce it down to now? Uh, can I just answer, is that style of rugby going to be the style of rugby that wins World Cups now? And are we just going to go and all be bored at a World Cup? Well, or actually, we're going to say as rugby people, we don't like this, people. Yeah, but hold we on. want to Wait. run the ball. But you said it. They were so much better than that in the Rugby World Cup final and the capabilities. And they've had so many players in the past that have been good enough to create Ruby. So, so when you talk about some of these players, I talk about a Damien uh, Delende. I mean, these are guys that can create. Look, look at some of this great play here, oh, deep yeah. from their own half. John de Villiers. I mean, they've had capable players. These players are capable now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Brian Habana, absolute legend. This running, exciting rugby. There are people in South Africa that just love this, and this is why they play South Africa. But JK asks, is this, is this how we're going to World Cups? We're going to win World Cups. I think the way the rules are moving, it's actually favouring that. The way the TMO is getting more involved. We look at Habana here in his prime. There's nothing more I'd want to watch than the All Blacks versus South Africa with an amazing back three running into the line, ejecting themselves into the game. But they've changed the rules, the 50-22, the kicking, favouring the attacking team now. So your question, I think, JK, is extremely relevant. The way the game is moving forward might not favour what we want right now. And also, I think the South Africans got a little bit caught in the game that the, the, best, the best of the best get caught in, which is focusing on the All Blacks. They, they wanted to just beat the All Blacks, not worry about the Wallabies. England did it in the World Cup. They, they beat us, thought they'd won the World Cup, didn't get past the South Africans. So I think South Africa got a little bit trapped, but I like what JK is alluding to because this may play out in their favour in five or ten years. I feel as though they've reduced their game down to the fact that they're not prepared to go to their strengths, though. They've got plenty of players who can carry the ball, can go hard at the line, can get you over the advantage line, can get you offside so you can get penalties. But then also... They used to go to their line-out drive. They used to go to the corner. They used that to accumulate in sevens versus threes. You look at these games where, yes, they've accumulated in threes, but the opposition have scored tries. Australia did that to them. They gave away some penalties. They took every single one. Look, I know you're looking but, at it and go, oh, they were only one play away in both those test matches. What is the end result? Can, can I just come back to a couple of things? This is the players. Stop. The physios on the field more than the guy. And then Gossi, they got uh, like got ten minutes in the bin. The physio took his place. There were fifteen people out there. Like, when do we start saying, "Is this? Have we just got away from the the game?" I mean, at all costs, you're gonna you're gonna slow it down. You're not gonna take a blood bin off. Mm. You're going to spend, what was it, like 10 minutes looking after a blood guy? We've got to look after him, I get that, but take him off the field, put someone else on. I mean, when, when do we sort of say, actually, winning, guys? I mean, if you, if you were the centre, what would you say? Imagine me out there, or you out there. Yeah, oh, look... I'd I, be blowing up. And, and you talk about, we talk about it all the time, the time in between Rugby World Cups, to develop your game 
to give yourself that opportunity to prepare in case you come up with a different challenge because when you start chasing a game and you haven't mm. been playing and you haven't been using the players on the field and they're not used to executing under pressure, then I think you're going to struggle. There have been so many great quality players. I had the opportunity earlier on, just before the show, to catch up with Jean de Villiers and I'll tell you what, this guy could play. Now Dupria, Stain de Villiers. Oh, that's leadership for you. He's one of the great players in the world, and he said, I'm going to take responsibility for this. Now Carter attacking. Intercept! John de Villiers. Under the bar he goes. The captain stands up. He's been on fire all season. Thanks for joining us on The Breakdown. Look, it was such a tight contest on the weekend. So very, very close. Do you think the Springboks maybe deserve to win the test? Yeah, look, Jeff, uh, firstly, thanks for having me on the show. It was it was quite a titanic battle, as we expected, um, you know, in the 100-test match. Uh, I, I definitely think that the Springboks could have won. Uh, you know, they kind of they kind of had um, pretty good control of the game for, for 76 minutes, you know, with, uh, you know, kind of a, a, date, a, a debatable approach as, as to how they went about it. But, um, you know, in the last four minutes, you know, unfortunately, I think, you know the the decision making was was extremely poor, and um, and eventually gave possession away that that, that cost it uh, or cost them you know conceding that penalty and then and then costing them the game. So you know in in these games it's so tight and and those you know those margins are small. You make the wrong decision like that, you lose the test match. So you talked about it momentarily the the fact that we're discussing so much about the strategy and game plan of the Springboks. We've probably never seen them kick as much as they have recently, but even when they got on attack close to the 22, choosing to go to the air, were you surprised with that given the skill set of some of the players? Yeah, look, Jeff, I, I think, Dave, you know, and, and we're not there in the mix, you know, deciding on what the approach is as to how do you beat the All Blacks. Um, you know, you, you, have a, you have a team of players with a certain skill set, then you have the opposition, then you decide, well, how can we beat them? How can we be better than them on the day? And the approach was obviously, you know, just to get the ball in the air, apply pressure, and uh, you know, and then get turnovers from that. Um, I think the, you know, the the lack of ambition, as you mentioned, when when they were on attack, I think that was the disappointing thing. In that you put yourself in a position. Yes, that strategy takes you to a certain area of the field, but then you need to be able to switch on, have the ambition to keep ball in hand and and, and score tries. And I think that's where they they you know where I felt a little bit disappointed in the approach. Um, uh, again, you know, if if they if they went on and won the game, um, you know, two three different decisions in those last four months, they won the game. You know, would you have uh, spoken about it? I don't know. Um, the big question though is, can they can they apply the same strategy this weekend and keep the All Blacks under pressure for eighty minutes as they did last week? Uh, there's a big question mark around that. There's no doubt that strategy has given you reward at certain pinnacle events over the last 15 or 20 years. Are you saying you'd still maybe like to see them play a little bit more rugby and develop some skills in case, like they did in the second test against the Wallabies, you have to start chasing the game? And do you have confidence the players are there to execute those plans? Yeah, 100%, Jeff. And, you know, a lot of the guys playing and, and who played on Saturday, you know, I still played with, and there's no doubt that they do have the skill set. So I think that ambition that we're talking about, you know, it's fine having, it's fine having that strategy. You know, I, I think a lot of test matches that we, that we won against the All Blacks, the same was applied. But it's being able to switch on when the opportunity is on, when the opportunity is there to take the game by the scruff of the neck and keep ball in hand, you know that's where you need to be able to switch on and and just get out of that out of that mindset. And I think you know again that was the disappointing thing about the weekend is that you know had they you know if they did that they would have won the game. You know and and then then the strategy would have been uh, executed perfectly. Um, it's the lack of having that little bit of variation that I think is costing them in the in the big games as we've seen in the last three weeks. Former Springbok coach Peter de Villiers has talked about the fact he's concerned South African rugby not being part of Super Rugby may be having an impact. Do you agree with those comments? 
Uh, I think I agree with it uh, in part because I think it's more it's more the lack of rugby in the last two years. You know, competitive rugby. You know, whether that is Super Rugby or any other international competition. I think that is the the difficult thing, and and also it needs to be taken into consideration in preparation for for uh, playing in the rugby championship, and especially against the All Blacks. Is that you know I don't think the the preparation has been ideal. You know these players are sitting on close to three months in a in a bio bubble. Um, you know where they haven't been able to see their families, traveling away from home, not being able to see friends, literally moving from hotel to to rugby field back to the hotel. And the mental effect on that, I believe, definitely has an effect on the field as well. So you take all of that into consideration. Then you take the strategy that was applied um, on the weekend. And, you know, I think a lot could have been better. A lot could have been different. But certainly all, the, all those things has, a, has an impact on the way that they are playing at the moment. So this weekend, we go at it again. And it doesn't get any easier. Are you expecting... A different mindset, a similar mindset, a different result this week. Did you think it would be that close between these two teams? Look, I, I always said that that I think that you know the first game that we really had a had a shot at it. Um, you know, the just the the impact of of playing the All Blacks, the 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 emotion of playing the hundred Test match, and and being able to get yourself uh, or the team up for it. Um, you know, I, I don't think it was difficult on the weekend uh, to do that. To do it again, um, you know, after everything that I've just said, and in, in terms of the mental state of the guys, it's going to be diff- it's going to be difficult. I, I, I struggle to see the box um, having a, a different strategy this weekend, and certainly all the talk that we've heard from uh, or heard from in the camp is that the same will be applied, just just better. Um, you know, I would like to see just that little bit of uh, a variation as we've spoken about, but it's going to be a difficult one for them. Um, you know, the, the All Blacks know what to expect now. Um, in a way, they probably knew what to expect last week as well. But to, you know, to get the, the rub of the green as we did a couple of times um, during the game on Saturday, that'll be difficult. So let's hope it's another humdinger. Let's hope it's, you know, it lives up to the history of the rivalry. Um, but it's, it's going to be a tough one. Um, excited nonetheless.